last part that we'll, we'll cover today real quickly is the sales process, right? In addition, of course, we have vendors and we have to uh, get invoices and pay vendors, but we also provide services or, or inventory and goods that we need to sell to our customers. So if we come into, I'll start this example from our customer list. So we can come into um, our customer master and from here we can um, we can facilitate different types of transactions for a particular customer. Uh, the system does handle the ability to go from quote order to invoice if we choose to do so. In today's example, we'll just go right to an invoice so we can get something posted. Take a look at what that looks like on an aging as well as a GL posting. So if we're looking at our customer list here, if we notice to the right, I brought in that customer list Power BI page um, earlier in the demo. That page was showing us a customer here. It can also be pinned to our customer list page. So now I'm looking at this customer. I can see they have some ongoing sales. We've posted a bunch of shipments and invoices for them. I can see sort of what their sales amounts have been historically over time. Let's click on, let's try School of Fine Art. So if we change our selection, we can see that also then changes. And I'm getting some quick information about the School of Fine Art. So again, a Power BI report that we created gets used in Power BI for people who are there. For people who are in Business Central, they can still get those insights from Power BI directly from within Business Central. The history boxes are also key to this. I can see kind of what's going on. I can see this this particular customer has an ongoing sales order, so something I've received but not shipped, or taken an order but not shipped. We have two invoices, so things that I've shipped but not posted yet. And then I can see I have 59 posted invoices for this customer. So it's a customer I do a lot of business with. They obviously have a larger balance than my other customers, and they're a great customer. They don't return anything. So I have no credit memos for this customer. So let's use the School of Fine Art to generate an invoice. So we come to School of Fine Art, we can take an action. All right, we're going to say a new document. Now let's just do an invoice, though. Let's go right to a sales invoice. So when we do this from the customer listing page, everything about that customer, all the defaults are going to flow in to the document. So the address, the date, our key contact for, for maybe where this, this invoice needs to go. And if I have multiple invoices and I want to change that, I can set that up at the customer level and choose other contacts that that customer uh, may have. So maybe it's who issues me the PO, I need to make sure the invoice goes to that person. As long as I have those people set up as contacts within Business Central, I can use those contacts. And when I generate the invoice order and or invoice, I can make sure that invoice goes to the right person at my customer, ensure that they get what they need. It also ensures that I get paid on time. So we'll leave it as Megan. So Megan's our, our contact there. We're doing this today. That's great, she sent me a PO. So we got a customer PO that I'm gonna put in here. I have a salesperson code, so maybe I'm identifying this. Uh, I'm tagging these sales against a salesperson because I wanna do some analysis later on about orders or invoices and payments uh, based on um, things that my salespeople out in the field have sold. So our header gets automatically updated. We have some items in our, in our system, so we'll go ahead and leave this item. If we were just selling services or if it was a maybe a service charge or some other type of invoice where I just needed to hit a GL account, I can do that as well, right? So I can just book something directly to a GL account, goes into receivables, hits my GL where I want it to go. If I choose item, not only am I going to be impacting the customer, the general ledger, I'm also going to be impacting our item, item sub ledger. So we're leaving that inventory um, from whatever location we may have it. So let's go ahead and sell the school. Let's see, we'll sell the school of fine arts. Uh, let's sell them a desk. So we sell them a desk. We then want to sell them that desk from a specific location, right? We know we have a desks from the main warehouse. We're only selling them one today. We have some other dimensions that we might want to capture here, right? So maybe we want to capture market code. Maybe they're in Orange County. Right, so I don't want to put a department here so I can leave that blank. So again, we can create those dimensions and use those dimensions on sales transactions, on journal entries, on purchase transactions. 
I can see here that I picked a location and there's not enough. So if I kind of click out, I can see what we have for this item. So let's highlight the line. Where are you? Let's check our notifications. I'll show those details. So this particular location doesn't have enough, but all locations I have five. So I do have the desks out there. So right from the sales where I can kind of go check and see where, where do I have this inventory? So I can see I've got some bad data in here. I have some receipts that where a location was not specified. So to get through this, this particular example, we'll go ahead and take our location out. And we could set things up to force things to happen, right? We can force dimensions, we can force locations and, and the like. So if data entry becomes a problem, we can, the system does allow for uh, set up to happen that forces certain combinations of things to be used. So in our case, we'll just sell them the one desk. Great, we got their PO. We want Megan to get it. This looks good. If you had approval request on invoicing and sales orders, you can set that up in the same way and would it work in the same uh, the same manner that we saw the purchase order work. But in this case, it's you know we got the order, salesperson sends it in. We want to go ahead and post and send that to Megan. Yep, we want to send it to her as a PDF. Now, on the sales invoice side, we're doing this from, from within Business Central, right? In the PO, we kind of look at everything from within Outlook, and we were able to do it there. As a user in Business Central, if they're in there, they don't need to, in, to do anything within their email. They can do everything from within Business Central. Now, Megan's not a real person with a real email, so we will just open this up in PDF, uh, but email capability within Business Central um, is there. You would be able to then pop that up and shoot that over via email to the customer. So there's our invoice that we can then also send to our customer. Now, within the system, when that happens, obviously we've impacted our customer, so that balance has gone up. I can see my total sales, but you know, there's our balance and our balance due. So we have some past due things out there for the School of Art is here. All of these are, you're able to drill into those numbers and then get back to the source documents that might be driving that. So we can see the list of invoices here. On all list pages, if I want to sort, we can do that. So I can sort this by date. I can sort this by number. I can filter columns as well. So this is true throughout the system is when I drill into something and I come to a list page, I can filter those, sort and filter those list pages to get at information um, very quickly. So I'm looking at what's, I see that I have a really old invoice here. We want to see that posted document. You know, they're a really good customer. They usually pay on time. Maybe they didn't get this invoice. I can pull that up. I can go ahead and decide I want to resend that. I'll send this to myself. I can say, yep, let's go ahead and send this out. I should change that so that goes out. We select OK. I've now just taken that very past due invoice right from the customer master, drilled into that, saw that that was OK, sent that to the customer. So if I look at my email, should now see that coming in. That'll take a few minutes. If for some reason this invoice is an error, right? We send it to them. We get a call back from Megan. She says, hey, you know, I, I told the salesperson this is not what I wanted. They told me to keep it and I wasn't going to have to pay for it. We verify that. Right from the posted invoice, we can go ahead and cancel, which will automatically create a credit memo. Or if there was something we wanted to correct, maybe the price was going to change. We can correct that from here as well. So very easy from within documents to make those corrections. If it does need to be returned or just simply credited, right from within the invoice, we can cancel that. It will automatically create the credit memo, reverse the entries, and apply that credit to the invoice. Right? So all in one step, really taking care of something like a mistake or even if we wanted to correct that. We can do that right from here. 
The last thing we'll touch on is, and we didn't show this on the uh, AP side, but very similar, um, a similar process for this, is that, of course, we can run agings, see who owes us what and how old things are. And those reports are available in Excel, right? So if I look at our my reports on the customer master, we can look at some finance reports and we want an age accounts receivable. Let's do that as of September 30th. Let's go a little bit later. So we have our transaction dates. We want to print this to Excel. Let's just go ahead and do that. So now what we'll get is a Excel version of our aging. We need to send this out to different sales reps or internally we're having a meeting and we need to go over what's due. We can quickly get this, email this out ahead of time, maybe make it part of the meeting request so everybody's got the same set of information when we go talk about what our customers owe. So we'll get that in Excel. As this is going, also mentioned, we, if you caught it there, you have the ability to email statements to your customers. You can schedule those statements to, to run at certain intervals. So if every month that customer needs a statement, we can have that statement go out to those customers. Uh, so you can ensure that they are, they know what it is they owe um, and potentially how late uh, some of those payments are, if that's the case. It's not too much data in here, but there's our, our customer master. So we got some credit limit information in here. We can see the balance due and sort of how that flows out uh, as it relates to how old uh, those customers are. You get this in detail as well. So if we ran a detailed trial balance, you would get this broken down in the same format, except this would be broken down with all of the invoices here.